So now we'll talk about density again and TS diagrams. So as I was saying, a lot of the time temperature changes quite rapidly, especially in the upper ocean, and determines the density. And so to back up quickly, density is typically given by the Greek letter rho, and for most of the ocean, it varies roughly between 1,024 and maybe 1,029 kilograms per meter cubed. And just for reference, fresh water is close to a thousand kilogram per meter cubed. Since the first two figures are always the 10, uh, people define a value called sigma t, and that is rho as a function of salinity and temperature minus a thousand. So that allows us to just talk about density without considering the the one zero in front. So typical sigma t ranges are 24 to 29. So if you have a typical temperature profile looking something like this, then your density profile will broadly mirror that in most scenarios. But it, but it will be reversed since the warmest temperatures give the lowest densities. Now, sigma as a function of S and T is a complicated relationship, but you can, for every salinity and temperature value, you can compute in principle or estimate one given sigma T value. And what people do to represent this graphically, that's quite helpful, is so-called a temperature salinity diagram. In short, TS diagram. And TS diagrams have temperature on the vertical and salinity in parts per thousand on the horizontal, and then you enter the function sigma t as contour lines. Then lines of constant density take the following shape roughly. So these are contours of constant sigma t and for this line down here sigma t is 29 28 27 26 25 24 so you can see as your salinity goes down your density goes down and as your temperature goes up your density goes also up from 27 to 26. And part of what's important here is that these are not straight lines. So there's no linear relationship between S and T and the density, which makes this whole thing a little complicated. And one thing that's that these lines illustrate quite nicely is that for cold temperatures, a change in salinity will change the density much more than a change in temperature. So let me just sketch a more extreme version that to illustrate that. Let's say this is our constant density contour, and here we have T and S. And so now let me change temperature by one degree going up here, 
And what you realize, you're staying approximately on this constant density contour, meaning you're not actually changing the density. Whereas if you're at a much larger, at a warmer temperature, and now you're moving perpendicular to the contour. So, so down here you have no change in sigma t. And here you have a large change. So that means changes in temperature are really important for the density of the ocean in warm waters, like in the tropics, but really not that important in cold temperatures like the high latitudes, the polar regions. Whereas for salinity, it's the opposite. So if I change salinity by a given amount, I have a large change in density at low temperatures, whereas for warm temperatures, if I change salinity, I have a small change. And as a result, in polar regions, salinity is very important for the vertical ocean structure.